If you're cooking in cast iron, then you've probably had this problem, the flaking of your seasoning coming off. Now, I don't care if you're just a beginner or you've had cast iron for 50, 60 years. This problem is going to happen sometime in the process of you cooking and cleaning and taking care of it. But it's not because you're a bad person. It's not because your cast iron is no good. But we're going to show you how to prevent also, but what? How to take care of that problem and remedy the situation. In this video, we are going to give you a quick tutorial on why is my cast iron flaking and how to fix it. So why is it flaking? I have good cast iron. I'm a good cook. I seasoned it. Why is it doing it? There's really three reasons that cause cast iron to flake. And flaking, and most of the time, it's not going to happen so much in the bottom as it is around the side walls of your skillet. And that is due to over seasoning or a low grade smoke point oil that you're beginning to start out cast iron with. Acidic ingredients, especially on new cast iron. Something that hadn't been used over time to build up that really good thick finish, acidic foods will eat at it. You can cook with acidic foods, but that is also gonna really give you a higher chance to get flaking if it's not really well cured out. I have a stargazer skillet here. You can see there is a considerable amount of flaking going on here. Now this happened intentionally, it did, so we could do this video. But we're gonna show you how to fix this whether you've been cooking in it for one day or 300 days, and it's really quite simple. You know, the first thing that I recommend really for sort of what I would call light to medium flaking on a skillet is coarse sea salt. You just pour, pour you quite a bit in the bottom of that skillet, get you a good soft rag, or you can use half a potato that's cut in two, and just really go to scrubbing that skillet well. Heavier flaking, I like to drag out the steel wool. Any particles that that salt might not have loosened up, or if it's really a heavier flaking that you're trying to get rid of, I need you to sort of rinse that thing out good with some warm water, and then go back and uh, let's fill that surface. Make sure you don't feel anything that is left in there that you think needs to come off. This is not gonna get plumbed down to a bare skillet. We're just trying to get everything that is loose off there. A lot of skillets that you use to get some buildup on the outside and just give it a good scrubbing on the outside too to loosen anything up that might have been there. After we've got that skillet clean and you have rinsed it out, you put it back on a heat surface and I would say at least medium high. I touch my hand to the rim of the skillet and when the side walls and the top of that rim are hot enough I can't leave my finger on it, I guarantee you the skillet is hot enough to season at that time. And then I use grapeseed. Uh, grapeseed bonds well to cast iron. It's going to give you a good coating, but make sure you're using a good lint-free rag to do this. You want to make sure that you give that outside a coating of oil too. Uh, I always like to place these on a flat sheet pan. You want to slide that tray, cast iron skillet and all into that preheated 400 degree let it cool to room temperature all on its own before you start this process over. You might be expecting, hey, it's going to be solid black right off the bat. No, it's not. You're going to see sort of a patina there to it, and you can see where that oil has started to bond to that cast iron. Time to start this process over. Remember I told you a minimum of three times. and Let that skillet get hot, just like we did the first time, and then I want you to pour that grapeseed oil in there. Rub it around with that lint-free rag to where you've got an even coating all the way around. But instead of just putting it right directly in the oven, we're going to let that skillet sit there and heat just a little till you begin to see it smoke just a tad. Then we're going to turn that burner off and we're going to take that rag and we're going to polish that skillet one more time, sort of like you're buffing it. Just keep shining that thing up to where you can nearly see yourself in it. That's going to give her a, a smoother finish, but also going to help that thing get a better finish on it quicker. You know, the second time you pull that skillet out of the oven, you begin to notice that there is a little more brown and black color than there was just a uh, shiny raw cast iron. So you're, you're making some difference here. The more you do this, the better it's going to be. Four trips in the oven have passed in two days, it has, and folks, we have made a big difference. Now, when you pull that out of there each time and you get to see in a little changing of the color, don't think it's gonna turn automatically glossy black that first time. Cause you can see we're still at four times here and we still like a little getting it completely solid gloss finish to it. I did this four times. I strongly recommend that you do it at least three. And after that, 
I would think the thing you could do in there is put you some good lard in there or something and go to frying some potatoes. Deep frying in freshly new season cast iron just helps that process go faster and go quicker and it'll just give you that good glossy finish uh, ahead of time. Now if you're doing this and each time you pull it out of the oven after it cools, run your hand across there. If it's a little gummy, you have way too much oil in there that you started with. Make sure you wipe that excess out. But feel of it. Is it getting smoother? Every trip getting smoother. That's what you want to know. But also remember when you get this done, after you've been deep frying in it a while, don't think that you need to cook something that's barbecue based. Remember me talking about that or citric based in here because you're going to eat away at what we done took off there. Make sure every time you use that skillet or piece of cast iron that you're redoing that First of all, it is cleaned well, it is dried on heat, and then it is re-seasoned. And it doesn't hurt periodically maintenance. If you want to go back, heat that oven to 400 degrees and stick it back in there and let it do this again because it's just building up that finish that's going to last you a lifetime. Don't forget, if you have any trouble after this video, check out that cast iron playlist because folks, there is so much there that'll help you. It'll get you through the thick and thin and do's and don'ts of cast iron everywhere. But it is with great pride and honor that I tip my hat, whoop, and it is right here, and pay tribute to all our servicemen and women and all the veterans who have kept that old flag of flying over camp. Rest of you, come on in here. My hands is clean, it ain't got no grease on them from grease in the skillet. I'm gonna give you a big old cast iron hug. <laughs> we thank you so much. God bless you each and every one, and I'll see you down the I Got the Best Looking Cast Iron Trail. And it's now. I got nothing. There's nothing in the skillet. There's, here, let me just show you. Let me just show you that in the skillet, right here, there's no food. That's why you and B have boycotted this video a little bit, because at no time was there food under the skillet. And uh, I know, he was just so happy and was never grumpy. Oh, 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 oh